Hello again and welcome to the Bex EDM YouTube channel. I'm going to do a new YouTube video series on the redesign of my Mark I uh, design wire EDM machine. And um, for this first part I'm going to discuss the C-Arc. Which is the, uh, yeah, the end effector that handles positioning of the wire. And uh, tensioning the wire and feeding the wire and things like that. So you're looking at my current design now and uh, although I have successfully made many many parts with it and I actually quite like it, there are of course always some things um, that can be improved. Um, which is also the case for my Mark I design. And um, yeah, you basically learn these things as you go along. It's, it's impossible if you make a brand new design that it's first time right. There are always things to improve. So, what can be improved about this design? Well, the first thing is this lower jaw here. So this section, the lower section of the sea arc is made from anodized aluminum. And I made an extra heavy anodization um, to prevent corrosion. But even with heavy anodization, as you can see, after many many hours of uh, EDM machining, um, small specks of erosion start to occur here. Um, so eventually, if I keep machining, this will look really bad. So this has to be improved. This lower jaw, this lower section, needs to be made from stainless steel. So that's the first improvement. The second improvement um, is actually not so much a design imp improvement, but more an improvement such that it is easier to make. And that is this part here. So this part is a X and Y flexure, and um, it's comprised of many smaller subparts, some of which are laser cut, and this is actually quite hard to make. I really like this design, it's very compact, it's very accurate, um, it's very stiff, but it's a nightmare to make. Um, I want something easier. So a design improvement of this part should be uh, some kind of flexure mechanism that's easier to make. Uh, next up are the motors. So I have two motors here, one running this capstan setup, which is feeding the wire, and one motor that's running this capstan setup which is tensioning the wire and the motors are uh, located here right here and right there but these motors these were salvaged from another machine um, and these are Maxwell motors and these are really expensive so I want to change the design such that it uses off-the-shelf easy to get motors um, which are cheap uh, it should be doable and also these motors are uh, mounted with these uh, bushings here in, be in between um, and I have additional load bearing bearings in this plate and in this uh, body in between because the, the load on these motors um, sideways load uh, cannot be very high so it's best to use different motors that can have a, um, that can bear a high side load because then you don't need uh, additional bearings and all sorts of things that make this setup more complicated also this motor is mounted um, in a body that can rotate um, which is spring loaded to the fixed world uh, that's there for legacy reasons. Uh, I need to design all that stuff out. It can be much simpler. So the motors are a big improvement, or it should be uh, uh, yeah, changed in the design, which is then a good design improvement. And uh, the next is that I want to maximize the number of uh, OEM parts, so original and manufactured parts. Such that you, know, you don't make you have to, you don't have to make so many parts yourself. So I want to try to maximize that. And um, probably the biggest design change that I want to do here 
is to get rid of this capstone roller, this setup here. So I really like this setup because if the if the wire breaks, um, it never unspools here. It always stays on this roll because of this uh, roller that um, pushes yeah or keeps the wire in place. So if the wire breaks, you never have to re-spool this part here. Um, but if the wire breaks, you do have to uh, re-thread it and then wind it over this wheel a few times, which is a bit of fiddling. I got quite handy with it, but um, it takes too long. So this is the biggest uh, annoying thing in this design. It works perfect, but it takes too long to re-thread the wire. So I want to get rid of this. I want to you know, use a different um, uh, tensioning concept. What I also want to do is that you see these are a lot of really small rollers and um, uh, small, the use of small rollers um, causes the wire to have a small bend radius and then if your wire is severely eroded by the process maybe because you are not running it fast enough and um, it can break when uh, it's curved by such a small roller um, which is something that you should prevent so I want to use larger diameter rollers that's a design improvement and um, in this design I'm using um, wire guides off of some EDM machine I don't know exactly which one I got these uh, wire guides from a friend um, and um, I don't know what the origin is of these wire guides, I don't know to which type of machine they belong and so forth. So um, if I want to replace these it's a bit hard because I cannot find them. So another design improvement is to uh, see which wire guides are the easiest to get online and then design those in. Another design improvement is these two screws here, I need to unbolt and tighten them again each and every time when I want to uh, change the workpiece height. I want some kind of quick release right, mechanism here. And uh, another design improvement is that these small wheels that I want to make bigger anyway, um, these run on ceramic bearings, um, but this type of ceramic bearing is really expensive. So I want to find a different type of ceramic bearing that's cheap and that's bigger than this one. And yeah, once I've uh, improved on those points, then I really have a design that uh, anyone can make and um, yeah, that should have uh, fixed all uh, the things I dislike about this design. So ready to make Mark II of the uh, wire EDM machine. I'm going to do the full design in Fusion 360 and I'm going to do a few videos about it. And this, so this is the first video that's covering the Sea Arc. Okay, this is the MK2 design of the C-Arc of the BEX EDM wire EDM machine. And I'm going to uh, take you through the deltas between the MK1 and the MK2 design. First of all, this design is available for free on BEXEDM.com. You can download it in basically any format you would like. So you can head over to BEXEDM.com and download it over there. And uh, yeah, look at all the details yourself. Now, about the deltas between the MK1 and the MK2 design. So, the first delta is the lower jaw of the C arc, which was made of solid aluminum, anodized aluminum. Um, this time it's made from stainless steel tubing, 2 mm thick stainless steel, and this will prevent ero uh, erosion by the EDM currents. Next up is the uh, positioning mechanism for the upper wire guide. So now we have a flexure as well. I really like flexures because uh, yeah, they're playless and really accurate. But this flexure is easy to make. It's basically a section of uh, 2 by 2 centimeter stainless steel tubing, also 2 millimeter thick with some holes drilled in it and reamed for accuracy. So you can drill and ream these holes 
and then the slits you can yeah simply solve them on the bandsaw. They uh, don't they don't have to be that accurate. So the flex turns have been calculated by finite element uh, analysis um, to make sure that they're uh, in within range of the stresses and strains. And this um, uh, flex turn is then positioned by two adjustment knobs, one for X and one for Y. And opposite of the knobs are spring spring loaded plungers, which are OEM parts. So I'll also make a part list for all the uh, components. I'll do that at a later moment. First, I'll upload the design. Here's the second spring loaded plunger. And yeah, then uh, the the head can be lowered and, and raised like this. And on the back, another design improvement is a quick release mechanism. So these two knobs allow you to release the tension here, adjust the height, and then you can tension them on the back again to uh, set the height of the workpiece. Uh, another design improvement is uh, that I tried to maximize the number of OEM parts. So these knobs, all screws, uh, these spring-loaded plungers, these, uh, these clamps, this spring here, um, uh, all bearings, they're all OEM parts. Um, parts that are not OEM so that you have to machine yourself are yeah, the, the joining bodies. So this body here, uh, this body here, this body, uh, this plate is something that you need to machine. And the, um, the linings for the bearings. So each bearing has a metal liner over it with grooves to position the wire. And these liners, they need to be machined. They are custom parts. So inside here, um, there is an OEM part, which is a, a, a urethane lined roller. Um, and that uh, the steel lining is placed on top of the roller over the urethane, such that it provides an isolation barrier. And here you can see another design improvement, this mechanism here. So it used to be a capstan mechanism, same as here. But now it's a, um, not sure what the name is, but it's, um, I think, pinch roller mechanism would be the right name. Because um, it uh, pulls on the wire not by friction, but by pinching it. So if you lower this, if you open this clamp, this hinge hinges to the right and the wheels open and it creates a gap here then you can um, yeah, mount the wire in between the wheels close the clamp and then with a certain amount of pretension that you can select by this little knot here the wire is pinched against the drive roller here so the drive roller is on the left side and it's driven by the uh, motor here in the back which is also a design improvement. Um, yeah, the Maxwell motors have been designed out, and instead these uh, micro motors, well, they're not micro, but the brand is called Micro Motor, are uh, yeah replacing the Maxwell motors, and these are quite low cost, much better um, uh, fit for this design. Also, what you can see is that the smaller rollers have been replaced by larger diameter rollers and inside each roller there is a, a ceramic bearing as well but these are 608 type of bearings which I actually purchased on eBay 10 pieces for $45 which is a really acceptable price I think and it was not a super uh, one-time deal or something uh, it seems to be that the 608 type bearing is such a mass product that even the ceramic bearings are uh, quite low cost. So this was a good design option. Next design improvement, the wire guides. So these are inside here. Yeah, I made this, uh, this little nozzle here. I made it um, see through uh, so that you can see the wire guide, the wire guides inside here. And it's an 
S103 uh, SODIC wire guide, which is uh, one of the most common types that I could find. I actually purchased them on um, AliExpress for really reasonable price. I think they were about uh, twenty dollars something. Yeah, uh, so really really cheap and easy to get. So that's a good design improvement. And uh, I think that's it for uh, the design improvements um, between the Mark One and the Mark Two. So if you like this design, head over to backsedm.com and um, yeah, you can download it there. I'll make sure to include uh, the link uh, below the video here. So next up in this uh, series on redesigning my machine, um, I'll be doing the um, positioning mechanics for the Sea Arc. Um, and later in the series, I'll also uh, redesign some of the mechanics uh, for um, the alignment of the workpiece table and the water tank. Well, what it basically boils down to is that I'm completely redesigning my machine, my Mark I machine, and taking along all the learnings that Mark I has given me. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. If so, press the like button and see you next time.